Second part of the Ultimate Smokes Compendium, this time we're talking about Bind. If you watched the Ascent video, you're gonna already have an idea what to expect, but if you didn't, well, there's already one video released before this one about the other map, the Ascent. But now we're gonna talk about Bind. Bind is a map that definitely requires a lot of, um, not only intuition, but just straight up knowledge on how to smoke properly because there are so many things that influence on what is going to happen with the smokes that are going to do. So um, the the setup is the same as on the Ascent um, sheet. So you have first normal executes on the right side. You're going to have video resources here. Um, so essentially, I'm going to add more links in the future as well, uh, including to this video. And the link to the entire compendium, it will be in the description of the video. So... First, let's talk about the executes that are going to happen on the A side. There's a lot of difference, a lot of differences, sorry, when you play with a Sage and without a Sage. So we're going to talk about both of those scenarios. On the left side, you're going to have the scenario without a Sage, which means that you're going to have to fight for more of the A control because you don't have a way of easy planting. So you want to avoid smoking this area because that's one of the areas that typically, if you don't have a wall, you're gonna get spammed. If you compare it from the Sage plants, right? No one can spam you for those smokes when you have a Sage wall here because that's the first barrier that needs to be destroyed. So without that barrier, please don't do those smokes because those smokes are only meant when you have a sage right uh, when it comes to harbor we're gonna add harbor in the future but it's such a rare occurrence that he is in a rank game that we're not even gonna talk about it for now now the point is i point out two smokes here and here because you might play with brimstone omen astra and most of them have two smokes right the third smoke from the brimstone well you can always use it somewhere else additionally to those two smokes the point is you need to fight for this area first before planting. So those smokes help you to fight for this area. And also, it's incredibly important to get showers control first. So those smokes also help out to get out of showers and control bench, right? You don't want to put those smokes too much to your south part of the map because then the people from those smokes can swing out and kill the planters. Because if someone is planting here and the person just stands here in the smoke, he can have a straight line to the planter and kill him. That's why the smoke ends in this line. When someone peeks out, you can trade him if, in case he kills the planter or even avoid killing the planter by just being ready for someone to peek out of that smoke into the unknown, right? So that's why you have those smokes. Remember that this smoke and this smoke, they don't cover heaven. So if you're playing Brimstone, you can consider using the third smoke on heaven. Now, when it comes to Sage, there's a very big difference here on the setup because this smoke is actually landing on the top of the truck because when it lands on top of the truck, let me show you in-game how does this look. We're going to use the Omen, but the Brimstone is exactly the same. It's a little bit smaller, but the difference is minimal. So when you do on the top of the truck here, you're going to cover heaven at the same time, which is important because now you have an easier way to go onto site. So you put one smoke on the top of the truck in the middle of it here, and the other smoke to cover it uh, alongside the other one when it comes to the, just the side. And now you wall with the sage in the front of the smokes. Incredibly important to not wall inside of the smokes because you will not be giving informations if someone was standing in that smoke and now he might be on the wall or he might be even in front of the wall and he might just push out and kill you when you're planting. So do the wall in front of the smokes so you're never gonna die because of that. Now you have space to plant and that's about it. Now that's the biggest difference between planting with sage and without sage, right? And then when it comes to... Oh, I actually made a diagram for the brimstone concept. Never mind. So when it comes to brimstone, remember, you can also smoke heaven, but you don't have to, but you can, right? And if you want to smoke lamps, choose one of those smokes. They all have a little bit different of an aspect because if you smoke with the first smoke, that means it's easier for you to go 
into lamps, but and you can just post yourself somewhere in this position of the smoke, so you control that part of lamps when you do first and execute, and if someone is standing in the lamps as a defender, then he's rarely peeking out of this when you're doing an execute for short, because he can easily get killed. If you do the middle smoke, that allows you to check this first area without being exposed to the further parts of lamps, so you can take a little bit more control of lamps piece by piece. And if you do this deeper smoke on lamps, that allows you to even check further, right? But there are more angles now that you're being exposed uh, when it comes to entering first hookah because players can stand in the entirety of here um, in, in inside of the lamps. Now, so just choose one depending on what you want to do, right? If you play with a shotgun, like if you attack from short with a shotgun, I would say the, probably the best smoke will be the middle one, the second one, because now you can pre-fire this angle and also sh blindly shoot with a judge into those angles. Maybe you get a kill as well. And it's also easy to just jump into a, a smoke and just try to get a kill right now when it comes to viper default setup there's so many aspects of what you can achieve with a viper default setup on short that i'm not going to describe it in this video because you already have two links on what it does so in the video resources that you currently can see here in the video resources on your right i put in a video of how Boaster made a setup on short that is incredibly efficient and has multiple purposes and has multiple pressure points. So you should be using this setup in like 99% of the cases because it's so efficient. So watch that video. It explains every single concept that Boaster did uh, with that setup. And then the other video, they are a little bit outdated because this is like from very long time ago when I was playing Viper. Uh, two parts of how to play Viper on bind, including lineups for snake bites and so on. But there's also a lineup that is um, showing, uh, actually, it's being shown in the Fnatic Booster video as well. So, uh, anyway, if you want to learn, there are videos here on your right. Let's go back now to the rest. So, uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to now B side, the executes here. In 99.9% .9 of the games, you're only going to see this kind of execute that you have on your left. People typically don't do anything else. They just do smoke on elbow, smoke on CT, and they're done. That's it. Now, the problem is that this second smoke on CT, right? This one, smoke on CT. Uh, if you go, if you play Omen, by the way, or Astra, this is the order you do it, right? So first smoke here, second smoke here always this way because you should be attacking from long first and hookah should be second right unless your teammates from hookah are going first then you have to smoke this one first but the point is the smoke on ct is not even important because if you do a execute towards b side typically there's no one in ct anyway because there's no point in playing that position. Defenders are playing from backside they're playing from tube maybe from cubby and they're never in ct right? That CT smoke helps you when you're trying to stop a retake or a rotation. But if you're efficient, that smoke never does anything. So you should be paying attention more to the first smoke because that's the most important one because you have to cut off the potential players from elbow because they are actually playing from that position when they're defending the site. Now, so when you have one smoke on, on, uh, on bind, you should always smoke elbow unless you're forced to jump out of hookah. But then we have other examples for that as well. I'm going to talk about it a little bit as well. But in general, this the second smoke on CT, completely not important. And you shouldn't worry about it in most of the cases because, as I say, they don't, they don't really deliver a lot of value. Now, the setup on the right side, unfortunately, will make a lot of your teammates angry because they will not understand what you try to achieve with it. But it's one of the most efficient ways of attacking B when it comes to playing against operators or if you have a lot of flashes. The point is, when you play against an operator, right, typically someone will be standing, like if there's a chamber, a jet maybe, they will stand in this area of an operator and just kill you on long before you peek because your smokes are not doing anything, right? So this smoke... Peeking out of B main, uh, out of B garden, sorry, is incredibly important because it breaks that line of sight. And not only that, it allows you to literally sneak out or just fully run out into all of those directions where the defenders cannot hold all of them. So if you just push out out of it with a potential flash, 
outside of the smoke, right? So if a Yoru bounces it from the middle of the smoke, just straight up, it flashes the entire side, like straight up, not, like literally bounces in the middle of it, right? Uh, Sky Flash can do the same, Kanyo can do the same. All of the flashes can be incredibly efficient to attack the entire side because they're gonna go on top of the smoke so they will not flash anyone in the smoke, but it will flash everyone on site, including the players on the backside. And because of that, you're gonna, you're gonna able to build up enough pressure to just run it onto side. And what, what is even more important if you want to check the cubby position, you are not exposed to cubby, so there's no crossfire being set up by defenders, right? And you break all of those line of sights. The same happens with the backside. Those players don't see if you check cubby first coming out of the smoke. So, unfortunately, this smoke is going to be always met with, what the fuck is this smoke? That's how people react. Uh, when it comes to ranked, but it's incredibly efficient, super efficient against operators, and you should probably be doing it way more than you think you should. So that's one thing. And then let's go uh, for one smoke executes, very niche scenario, but very helpful if you think about it. So you only have one smoke left, right? If you play Brimstone, you might actually be left in such position a lot of times. What to do, right? So if you're going through Hookah, this smoke over here allows you to jump out quietly on the box while still allow you to fight potentially those angles over here, right? So you are able to fight without being exposed to potentially garden or elbow or backside from here, right? So you're able to isolate an angle for a fight, which is very important. It also allows you to build pressure because you can always run out from those directions. If you haven't have any flashes, that's even better. Now, when it comes to attacking from long, it's incredibly inefficient. Um, but we try to do as much as possible, so this kind of smoke allows you to, it's like a variation of the smoke from Garden, right? It allows you to peek out of Garden, check um, the left side positions first, right? And then if you check that, you can also peek out out of this to check those angles, or just straight up peek from here, and uh, sorry, uh, when you check from here into B back B side, you can check from elbow uh, to elbow as well without being exposed to the, those areas over here. So this is not in any way an efficient smoke, but it's the best what you can do when you smoke from long and you need to enter the site, right? So that's the best you can do with one smoke over here. But you need to pay attention because remember, whenever you smoke like this, someone can be in that smoke. Just always remember that, right? Then we have default formation smokes. If you don't know what is defaulting, there's a, you're in luck. There's an entire tab that explains what is defaulting and how you should apply that in ranked. So every map here, hmm, apart from sunset, I need to add sunset here, is being broken down and you have explanations how to understand those many maps in the YouTube videos over here. Now, as, you, as long as you know that, if you watch the video, now listen to this. So those smokes are all the potential smokes that you can use when you play default. Let's start with B. The point of this smoke early on, when you start with a default setup, is to build up pressure on the B garden players because they don't know how many players are now going towards B, right? The same applies for the garden smoke and it allows you to take the orb control, which is very important. But try to avoid using this smoke if you play against Sky, because Sky typically flashes out out of this, or at least be aware that that can happen. This smoke we already like, spoke about, but if you play in a default, only use this smoke when you already have long control. Now, when it comes to Hookah, this smoke allows you to go in front of Hookah and not worry about typical right hand uh, positions because now we can swing into hookah and expect players only in those angles. Huge difference. And when you go into hookah, you don't have to worry about players uh, over here, right? The only player that can be is on the top of the box here if it's uh, a brimstone smoke, but he needs to stand on the top of the top of the box. And I'm not even certain actually uh, if you can be visible there. Let me just check something. So we're gonna go to hookah. We're gonna smoke like this, right? So we smoke like, we can actually, nah, no, we can't smoke like this. We can smoke like this. All right, so Omen smoke allows you to not really do that consistently. You're gonna be blinded. Brimstone smoke since it's a little, yeah, okay, you can abuse that, right? So you have to be aware that someone can stand on the box, but because of that, it still limits the amount of angles that you have to check, right? So not almost, almost not every player 
or no players will actually even go into that smoke because they will not think about that possibility. But that allows you to go into hookah and check all of its left hand side because of this smoke. And when you do that, you have more control of hookah, right? So that's the default smoke that you want to do if you want to take hookah control or build up pressure towards the defenders there. Once you have hookah control, or if you just got it for free for some reason, this smoke allows you to build pressure on the B-side players and allow you to potentially also explode from it. On A-side, same stuff. A potential smoke on A-side here is a sim has a similar um um has a similar con uh, not concept but it has a similar effect like the viper setup that you try to use but the viper setup is just 10 times more efficient at that because it allows to have potential executes and 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 lurks for the entire shot because it covers everything this one just builds up pressure because you can explode from it but players that are holding A will always know if you cross to lamps, which might not be the case with a Viper setup that covers both here and here or here, right? And then when it comes to showers, now this first smoke over here, you should not be using it unless you are really, really, really aware of what you want to do and what you want to achieve with it. The point of this smoke is that people can be very effective at swinging showers because the barrier, the distance for both teams here and here when you peek out fast, you're gonna be meeting here, right? So the point of this smoke is to limit the time that the player in showers has to have a contact on you. So you're able to like get more players in front of showers and be ready for a potential peek from this wide angle, which allows you, if you have advantage, uh, advantage in numbers, to get a kill on that unsuspecting players because he they peek out out of that sh smoke into showers into the unknown, right? And it also helps you getting the orb control. But again, this is a very risky smoke that probably in most cases, maybe I should have not even showed here because in most cases it might actually be detrimental. But the other smoke here uh, essentially doesn't allow for a deep uh, showers hold over here and allows you for easier orb control. And if someone peeks out of it, well, then you know which angle to hold, which makes it easier to get a kill. But if you want to step out of the smoke, then you are at a disadvantage because if players are just holding you, well, then that smoke literally ends with the doorway. So that is a defensive smoke from this side. And if you already have showers control, or you know that your opponents are not playing even in showers, then this smoke is great to build up pressure on the A players because now they have absolutely no idea what's going on. If someone is going out of showers to have bench, and because of that, you are building insane amount of pressure uh, on the defenders on A. Now remember, if you play Omen, on default, right, which is not happening that often on bind, but if you play Omen during a default, you should be using one of your smokes the first second the, the round starts, unless, for example, you want to achieve something completely different, but in, tip, in a typical round, you should be using your smoke in the first seconds of the round to have a secondary smoke in your second cycle, so after 40 seconds of the round. Right? It's very important why you should be efficient with your utility that is in a recurring uh, state like the Omen Smoke, like the Sky Flashes, like the Breach Stuns. All of those pieces of utility allow you to take space, deny vision, or straight up just pressure opponents by using them in the first seconds. And that's the goal of defaulting. You want to build pressure, bait out utility, and potentially gain map control or deny map control. Right, So always remember that. And... Um, and then on the default defense formation, bind is a little bit different than most maps, but you can still use defensive smokes in a default way to deny us the same way in attack, vision control, or map control. So the first line of defense, if you have a deeper control, like if you play from here, then this smoke is great to deny the first pressure that is happening from Fonten. If you play in Hookah, this kind of very deep smoke uh, builds up pressure potentially on the attacker, so they're not that eager to go into this area, those smokes are typical defender smoke when you defend from side, right? Remember that you don't want to cross this line with your smoke because that allows your team, that allows your opponents to actually jump out of them very, very efficiently. So don't cross this line typically, right? And then on A side, uh, if you fight for showers control, smoking outside of showers, completely 
like stops your opponents from taking shower control and shower control is instrumental on winning bind something that not many people understand because typically if you have a sage that walls showers in any capacity and the attackers are not destroying it then literally you have a stack watching short that is a concept that ranked players never will understand hopefully that will change in five years maybe we're gonna have a proper proper play but right now i'm just i'm just angry at thinking about it but anyway my point is denying shower control is incredibly important for defenders so using this smoke alongside a player behind the smoke is very efficient at setting up a um at setting a, not a precedent at, at conditioning opponents so even if you don't play in showers just after a few rounds when you did that with you in showers right and then your opponents see this smoke, they're gonna just assume you are behind that smoke. So they might not be eager to push into showers. So you might not even play into showers because you conditioned them. And denying shower control, as I said, incredibly important. If you lost shower control, the proper smoke for shower is here that doesn't go through this line because if it leaks out, well, then it's literally an attacker smoke, just like I showed here right? Like, even if it leaks out a little bit, it builds up pressure on the potential defenders. And when it comes to A short, smoking like this on A short is not super efficient because someone can be standing on this, um, whatever that is, uh, this long box that allows it to sometimes peek over the smoke if they are not super efficient, but it does build up pressure and potentially stops a push from short if you do it early. If you can do it early, because you, you typically, if you want to do this, you want to pair it with other pieces of utility, like for example, if Ray's nades short early and you smoke it this way, that literally stops an entire potential execute in its tracks in the beginning of the round. But if you don't pair it with any kind of pressure utility, this smoke is more efficient just on stopping the potential, you know, push from uh, the A short. And that's about it. We're gonna, in the future, add more diagrams to the bind as well for potentially harbor i'm not gonna lie i'm not an expert in harbor and i'm gathering his experience with harbor right now playing him a lot and yeah i mean probably good i'm gonna do some um guides on harbor as well but in general this covers like most of the basic informations and some niche informations on bind next map i don't know which actually we're gonna we're gonna do but if you have a suggestion which map would you like to see next being added to the compendium leave it in the comment all right thank you for watching thank you for learning if you want to share this with your teammates um friends that want to learn more valorant that would be absolutely phenomenal because the goal is to educate people on how to play the game properly thank you again and see you guys in the next video